to This Is These Shift Stories. Very excited tonight because we have the gorgeous Bernadette Archibald. Welcome. Thank you. And Bernadette's story is amazing and what she's done and how she has actually <laughs> made such a dramatic difference inside of corporations with that um, amazing experience and heart I've now discovered and vision uh, will be great to hear about tonight. So you're a growth, um, a business growth strategist and you have a very uh, amazing history about what you've been doing. So tell us the first question, which is your story. My story, I'm Bernadette. I'm from a very big family. From a business point of view, I'm about brands and leadership. I have lived in five countries. Five countries, wow. <laughs> tell me what hit the countries. Australia, of course. Yeah. Uh, China, Kazakhstan, Singapore and the United States. And my most valuable possession is my passport, which is proof of where I've been. <laughs> wow, you're the part, it's kind of an exciting thought of living in all those places. What was your favourite? Oh, there's no favourites. Oh, really? No. Really? Because I think what's interesting is about, it's a thing that I learned when I was an exchange student in the United States, that they're all exciting in their own way and what's exciting is about learning why they are the way they are which is about their culture their history their food their people their and how that all works together and you know that i think is what's exciting about all these places because the thing about Bernadette, which is amazing is that she <laughs> you go in and you actually change the insides of businesses to be incredibly successful and takes brands and their products and has given dramatic changes. You've coupled the jobs that you've actually been head of, general manager of. Well, at N Whirlpool and senior roles in other organisations. Big roles and turning them into million dollar products. And it's, I love that you've said that around that your passport is most valuable because that's what you do, it seems, with products and, and the insides of businesses. You see it all, the value, equally, as part of it, which is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah I think that, um, well, building portfolios of brands is something that I'm known for and can do a pretty good job at. I believe, Blue <laughs> You've been too kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, it's, it's the reason why today is just to speak with you about your incredible experience of, of doing a big job, and it is a big job to turn around in, in big organisations. And so I'm, I'm digressing here a little bit, but what is the thing that has been the most important way to make that change, do you think, when you go in? Do you, is it having an open mind? What's the most important thing for you to do when you come in? To listen. To listen. Yeah. When we talk about communicating, particularly in the West, it's usually about articulating, and I think I'm pretty good at that because in Kazakhstan, uh, the company language is Russian, so I did my job <laughs> through a um, translator all wow. the time. Um, but to listen to what's being said and what's not being said, and understand that around you know whatever the issue is around the individual, around how that can add value to a brand and a business. How do you listen? with a different language because you know there's so many nuances well you learn right you and learn. you practice and you learn to ask good coaching questions so that you make sure you're getting the whole story as i said what they're not saying as well as what they are saying incredible wow i could just ask you so many questions but we'll stick to the seven uh what was the best advice you've ever had uh, i've had lots of great advice but i think what I'd say is trust your intuition. It's the, right under your skin and it's that first voice you hear. And if you can learn to be in touch with it in the good times, it will do you very well when you're challenged. And what the great thing about intuition is it's always right. For you and your circumstance, it's always right if you can tap into it effectively. What was the thing that helped you be able to tap into that? Because, you know, sometimes you go... Is that just my thought or is that my intuition or is that my fear? You know, yeah. what do you Well, think? I think partly I had that in me from a young age. But um, when I was at Whirlpool, I was very fortunate to be given a very high-end executive coach. And he actually, his profession was acting and teaching acting. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of exercise around that and made me read some books on how to tap into my intuition and be confident that that is the 
that voice, that voice. <laughs> and then to leverage it. Yes, I find I think for me when I got it was really dropping into the heart, you know, rather than going, okay, if I take all this stuff going and bring it down, helps yep. a lot. We'll have to find some of the names of those books. Um, and tell me, what was the thing that steered you mostly to success? Well, I'd have to give credit to my parents and my family. <laughs> I come from an amazing big family. We've just celebrated my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. Mm. They instilled in us um, really, truly, that we could do whatever we wanted with focus and effort. Yes. Um, to own the consequences of every decision that we make, good and bad, and to choose to be happy. And what I've learned over time is that not everybody had that. I assumed it was normal, of course. Mm. And now I understand what an extraordinary gift it was. Oh, beautiful. Mm. And it is like such an interesting comment that sometimes we take for granted what we is normal for us. Yes. And um, I think that's a really great point to recognise that in yourself, what you do have. And I, I've just recently done a um, coaching session with um, a gorgeous coach, actually, who talks about the Clifton strengths, what your strengths are. I don't know that. And yeah, and it's amazing. And I was like, oh, wow, oh, wow, I didn't realise, you know, when you actually acknowledge parts of yourself, mm. I think it's really valuable. So people often ask me what it's like to be part of a big family. Yes. And I'm like, I don't know, because I've never been in a small family. But I do know, one of my sisters told me that... Um, you cannot but be a team player if you're from yeah. a big family because from the day you're born you learn to influence, persuade, to stand your ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hold the fort. So what number of you? I'm number three from the number top. Number three from the top. So no wonder you're so good because you understand when you come into businesses. I love it, I love it, I love it. And then they so you've got the heart with it. That's oh, awesome, I love it. Okay, so tell me, what's the best personal development tool that you've used to get through challenges? <laughs> could be either something every day or is it um, like you know my one is for me is about being present because oh. you know or I use meditation or like when you're stressed what's the thing that helps you it sounds like you I don't like to be stressed because I think that's a choice yes. um, and I one of the most extraordinary things I ever heard was Serena Williams being interviewed in a private setting, like I was in the audience, and she said pressure was a privilege. And if you think about that woman who's like world class, you know, one of the best ever, probably the best ever female tennis player, yeah. to see pressure as a privilege is extraordinary. That is an amazing yeah. thing to hear. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Because it's true, it's like... You know, the pressure that you have, often we create our own life anyway because yeah. we're wanting to achieve something. So that pressure is almost like a direction, isn't it? Yeah, if you can leverage it to your advantage, yeah. then, oh, yeah. you know, it's powerful. And I think that's kind of what she was saying. Yeah, 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 gorgeous. Oh, no, I love that. Okay. So it's just acknowledging what, what you're doing in your life to be present to that and whatever pressure is coming through. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And now uh, tell me, what is um, what do you think the issue is with society today? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> Can you solve it, please? Tell well, there's many, there. but I <laughs> one thing, having spent a lot of time in Asia, including Central Asia, I really learnt where people have less money, they have a, and I'm gross generalising, of course, mm. a generosity of spirit seems to be the other side of the scale mm. so i think there's a lot the west could do by looking and trying to learn from the history and culture and religions of the east to bring into our everyday life oh i love that because mm. there is i mean for me personally i always feel that there's such a lack of empathy at the moment that's the issue and i mean i have my thing it's around estrogen and all the food the toxins in the food but i think having that consciousness to be present and have those greater values of um, being grateful even, you know, which is the Eastern yes. thing. And being grateful and thinking about others as much or more than yourself, whereas yeah. I think the West, is, the scale's gone towards the individual. 
often first, which is not good for not anybody, good. not even for the individual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Um, but I am from a big family. Yes. God bless you. Teach me something I don't know. Well, here's this. <laughs> you would only know this if you'd lived in Kazakhstan. The DNA from every apple in the world can be traced back to the Aport apple tree, which is in nature in southern Kazakhstan. So nobody would think about that, but basically every apple comes from Kazakhstan. And the Aport apple is a very big apple. It's far too big to eat yourself. And what they do is buy it and cut it up to share amongst a whole family. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. It's about this big. That's amazing. I'm going to look that up now. I'll put yeah. a little picture around it. <laughs> this is incredible. I didn't know that. Thank you very much. Um, and tell me, what was the biggest shift in your life and why? Well, there's never one, right? But the yes. one, I did read this question ahead of time and I decided that I would talk about being an exchange student. That goes back to what we were talking about before that I learnt not to compare cities and countries. I often get asked, what's the best one, what's your favourite, yeah. whatever. And it is all about um, why they are the way they are, which is the combination of the history, culture, food, climate, etc. And yeah. that has been very powerful for me and it's why I've wanted to continue to live and work in um, many countries and ultimately why my passport is so important. So important. <laughs> so what, how, how old were you when you went over? And I you was 17 that? for one year. And then was there something that just went, oh my God, there's a bigger world out there? And is that the I shift? I think that I already happened? had that perspective because my father uh, worked for American companies and traveled a lot and brought that home. And that was unusual when I was a child. Mm. But I think through living, I moved from Melbourne to a city of 5,000 people in the Midwest in America that was all white. And I had moved from private school to a state school as well. So it was a massive change. Massive change. And, you know, you start thinking about things that perhaps 17 year olds don't normally think yeah. about when you're in that circumstance. And, you know, my brother the next year went to San Diego and he used to joke to me that, um, you know, I lived in this funny little town. Well, today I think he would be the first to say that I had the true American experience because yes. that's where most Americans live in small towns, in small towns. not in the big cities. Yeah. Well, and where are you living at the moment? Uh, I don't know where. <laughs> She's in her passport. <laughs> yeah, I'm New somewhat based in Chicago yes. and spending a lot of time in New York and looking for my next career and life challenge so yeah awesome the might adventure. even bring me home <laughs> i know you never know wow yeah. well i it's it's I'm, i want to have you on again and do another interview after you're in your next journey as well to see where that passport's taken you <laughs> again <laughs> cool. and um i love it and we're going to put the questions underneath so you can also read what um Bernadette's written and amazing thank you so much thank you very much Scarlett. and we'll Pleasure. see you next week and um love hearing that journey i'm going to ponder on that apple now and uh, look it up on, on google <laughs> thank you bye everyone